joy when you work with your hands? Oh, I just absolutely love it. I, I go into into this awesome world of, of creating and, and just thinking thinking about what I'm doing and and uh, your thoughts of the day, whether you were watching the news or you're watching whatever is gone and you just get into this this wonderful area or wonderful field of of um, working on your project that you've got on the go. And what color are you going to use next and and um, the feelings that you have that go along with it. Sometimes it's really joyful things you think of way back in the past when you were younger and you know when if I was working on trees uh, we used to play in the in the bushes and that type of thing and, and just the fun things that go on and and hours pass and you think oh dear I'm supposed to be making supper and here I am rug cooking <laughs> and and it's just it's just such a lovely world to um, be in and and creative it and you produce such fun things and, and uh, I love it. When you make a piece you have designed, do you see it in your mind's eye first or does it emerge as you go? Um, a lot of times I do design uh, in, in, my, uh, in my head and, and think it through uh, that way. Sometimes you, know, you wake up in the middle of the night and oh yeah that's the kind of tree I'm going to make or I'm going to do this kind of a landscape or and then um, sometime I uh, throughout the next day if I have these great thoughts I will um, jot them down or write them or down in a note or sketch it or you know have a sketchbook going along with me just just to keep keep uh, things things going and interesting but most of the time it is through what I've either seen or looked at or been at or photos, that type of thing. And, and then I work off of that. Can you tell us a little bit more about your artistic practice and process? Okay, the, uh, um, generally I start off with um, uh, some inspiration that I've had and a lot of times it's a photo. As, as in this case here we were on a holiday um, up along the coastline and uh, this came to mind that oh logs and trees and everything and I and when I got home I started uh, sketching out I quite often just work right on my my backing fabric which is a linen and I, I just do some rough rough sketches and and uh, then come in and start working in an area I often like to do the foreground foreground first and and build that way and then move into into the middle ground and finally the background and it's um, a process of uh, of dyeing wool uh, fabric and then uh, cutting it up into strips and from there I, I hook them into the pattern that I'm wanting to uh, uh, cover and from there if you keep at it and work and work and work and work, which obviously you can see at different stages, I have a lot left. Um, your your end result is um, often very inspiring and, and thrilling and, and one of a kind. And, and I love that. I love the just doing your own thing and and uh, enjoying what happens with it. You don't always have success, but it, it is a, a process and a, just a neat neat way of, of um, covering some of your adventures that you've been on and, and, and when you look at this you think oh I remember when we went on that and, and then you're, you're able to again go back and, and relive um, parts of your, your um, holidays and, and that and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. It's very, very easy to do. The neat part about um, your traditional rug hooking is, is, here I've still got pieces left over from the strips, is that you, um, you just work one strip at a time and it's just one process. It's just one, one hook. That's all you do. You, it's a repetition. So you just hook, hook it through into the backing and, and um, play with it that way.
Okay, I would like to talk about uh, the, a few seconds on, on um, this rug that I have here. Um, this was designed and started with my mom and my dad also helped pick the colors and, and talked about the different sheep. We all grew up on a farm and um, Ireland is one of our uh, ancestors um, symbol and mom would uh, you know, hook the different sections in here and dad would tell her what color to use and all that type of thing. They were both getting older and and um, it was just a fun, a fun uh, piece that, that, that I ended up inheriting from my family and have been working a little bit on it. So I'm going to take over it from here in and, and hopefully uh, can do it justice by, by keeping it in the family and uh, finishing it. That, that's one of my biggest downfalls is finishing projects as, as probably some of you have that trouble with too. There's always this new one that's that you got to get at too so I try to finish projects there. And then um, from from there I have a few other ones that that I've worked on. This one is actually also some of my mom's that it's just a nice soft little piece that she worked worked with. And this is my very first project that I ever did and it's definitely <laughs> I think I've came a little ways <laughs> but they're, they're so much fun I just love it and and uh, then going into some of our our landscapes that we have uh, around in the area uh, just some small small sections on that as well I wonder if you could tell us a little about your your influences artistically speaking, any mentors that you have? You had mentioned Emily Carr and Tanya Graham. Oh yes, I love I love the uh, Emily Carr in her her trees. I, I, they just draw me right in, and I just I just love her work, and and um, it uh, works quite well with rug hooking and that we can just just build. I don't think I have a project with me right now that is Emily Carr work, but it, it's influenced a lot of my uh, designs and type like that and even going over into what I was working on earlier my little demo and that her trees and the colors she gets into it and Tanya Graham uh, has been just so wonderful uh, for me as, as a mentor and that she actually was the inspiration for this one and um, when I she was at my place a while ago um, and she was teaching a class out here and uh, I said oh Tanya I said Look at this one and she says, well, Robin, if you ever want to finish it, maybe you should make it smaller. And <laughs> so that, that's, where, that's where these are from. This is Tanya helping me finish my project and, and um, oh dear, she's going to see it's still not finished. But <laughs> so yes, and she's been a great help with not only design and color and, and uh, very thankful for Tanya. And what about uh, Deanne Fitzpatrick oh, from and Scotia. Yes, she's absolutely wonderful. She has a website, um, hookingrugs.com, which is is so helpful. She she shares her knowledge continually and, and uh, she has online workshops and and she's her her style is too open and free and and um, relaxing. She works a lot with yarns, which I've gotten into playing with a little more now as well. So she's she's been a super help as well. Over the years it's been great. I think I've been rug hooking for twenty one years now. So it's it's been a big part of my life and a lot of fun and great, great, uh, satisfying projects. I wonder, Robin, if you could um, let us know what, whether you identify as an artist or an artisan. Um, I like to think of myself just as, as a artist of, of um, you know, create, creating my own work and I don't really um, think of myself as being one or the other. I, I just do my work and enjoy in, enjoy the process and and love both both you know, sides, the art part of sketching and drawing and and the I guess you could say the artisan part of the creative um, images of it. It's just so creative doing doing both of them. Um, I, I don't really like to be labeled as either. And, and I don't feel we need labels. 
we, we just want to enjoy what we're doing and and um, like a lot of, of different um, um, people that have I, I call them sort of hobbies I guess in a way um, you lean to one side or the other sometimes you will pick up other people's um, work you know like the designs that they put in into um, patterns and stencils and that type of thing and, and just merely go along and enjoy the process of, of your stuff and the other times you want to design and do your own process and, and, and call it well this is mine and, and you can do that signing your name as, as the uh, artist of or the owner of and all that that's a cool feeling <laughs> and I love that too so it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's hard to say. I don't think we need to be so heavy on labels with ourselves. We just just do our own thing.